Educational Communications and this station present Environmental Directions with Nancy Perlman. On this series, we explore the effects of human influence on the Earth's ecosystems and discuss solutions to environmental problems which affect the quality of life on this planet. Environmental Directions gives you the kind of information you need to help you participate in decisions impacting your community, the nation, and the world. Now, here's your host, Nancy Perlman. Hello, my guest is Bill Camarillo. He is CEO and founder of Agrimen. He is also a member of the board of directors of many nonprofit organizations, including the California Compost Coalition, Gold Coast Veterans Foundation, and California Lutheran University. Welcome, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, Nancy, it's a pleasure to be on your show. We're gonna be talking about organic waste recycling, returning organic carbon to the soil, because your company is one of the largest organic recyclers in California. You believe that if we do more green recycling, we can really help solve the climate problem. That's right. Recently, there was a bill passed in California, SB 1383, that required jurisdictions to reduce the amount of green waste they place in landfills by 75 percent by 2025 from the 2014 levels. Does that mean that jurisdictions are really encouraging people to put all that green waste into the green recycle bins? Not just that, but food waste as well. That 2025 deadline comes with a penalty for the jurisdictions if they don't get the 75% organic waste diverted from the landfills. And the reason they did that is because the Senate Bill 1383 is actually a climate change bill and it's to reduce methane production at landfills, which is harmful to the environment. It puts more carbon into the atmosphere, increasing uh, global warming and causing a lot of our climate changing challenges that we're facing with weather. Indeed, methane is a very potent greenhouse gas. The California Air Resources Board says that keeping 1 million tons of green waste out of landfills is equivalent to preventing 440,000 tons of carbon dioxide, equivalents from entering the atmosphere or taking 95,000 cars off the road based on the EPA estimates of average yearly automotive emissions. That is a great way to help solve a major problem. That is correct, and that is the amount of organic waste that Agriman in 2021 diverted from landfills in California, and the estimated volume of organic waste that needs to get diverted in the next three years by 2025 is almost 20 million tons of organic waste for all the communities in California that still needs to get out of the landfills. We talked about the bill SB 1383 requiring green waste to be recycled. Do we need more laws or better enforcement? Wow, you're on top of that. We've got enough laws in this state, in this country. If there was more enforcement, things would be better, right? Yes. So it's not just green waste. It's SB 1383 requires it's all organic waste. So it's green food, wood, and soil paper is going to ultimately be going into your green barrel. And it's going to be called an organics barrel, not just a green waste barrel. Terminology is important for us to be able to adapt to new New situations. Yes. A few decades ago, I would pick up wood left on the parkway by the gardeners when they trimmed and cut trees, and I would take it up to my mountain cabin for my wood fires. I don't see that anymore. What's happened? So there is a problem with wood. There's this thing called the bark beetle that has been transferred around. That's an evasive pest that is buried in trees, and it's about the size of the head of a pen. So some infected trees get cut up as firewood, and they get moved from one county to another and moves the pests from one county to another, and it kills big trees. So there's been a lot of legislation restricting the movement of firewood. That's one of the challenges. And then I think, in general, people just find it easy to see things like that and just throw them away rather than find ways to recycle them. Explain what your company really does. 
was because as far as I'm concerned, I cut and trim my bushes, my trees, my lawns, and put that waste in the green bin, and it goes away. I never see it again. Do you have a facility that it is dumped in instead of the landfill, and then you do some sort of composting to make it a new soil? Yes, we do. We have over 24 facilities in California serving over 200 jurisdictions that we receive those green waste bins and we clean them to make sure there's no contamination in them. We grind all that material up so that we can compost it. And then once we compost it and make it safe, we use that compost as a mix and well over 300 different types of products that we make. The majority of that material that gets composted actually ends up back in agriculture where we are using compost in agriculture to reduce water consumption and ag, the reduce of chemical fertilizers and pesticides and herbicides so that they can grow healthier plants and have healthier soils. So that's how we close the loop on organic waste so that it doesn't go to the landfill and actually goes back to homeowners, landscape projects, and agriculture to get it put back in the ground where it belongs. You're simply simplifying the process because so many of us find it a little difficult to make our own compost in our own backyards. It is. So we are a commercialized composter where we have a lot of big machines and we have the ability to mix the grass and the leaves and the branches in a correct formulation so that the material will compost. Typically, when a homeowner tries to do it by themselves, they don't have enough of the different requirements of grass and leaves and branches to be able to put it together to get the material to compost right. And when you're composting food waste, you have to put it in a bin and periodically turn it and put worms in there and other kinds of resources to make it work better? Composting requires a balance of carbon and nitrogen along with water and oxygen and in order for the bacteria to decompose the organic material. And that's where homeowners kind of get that formulation off balance and the material won't heat up so that it will break down properly. And you do have to turn it. And the reason you turn it is because you're adding some more oxygen to the material, which the bacteria needs oxygen to break down the organic matter. You said that you create 300 products from this. Yes. What's the difference and how do you make the different kinds of products? So if you can imagine that plants and trees are like all living things and they all require a little different nutrients. When you're growing, for instance, raspberries, raspberries need to live in a certain soil type with certain nutrients in order for them to produce the high quality berries that we're all used to with all the proper nutrients in it. So when we look at soil, we look at it through the perspective of a science lens and we're looking to make sure all the nutrients are in the ground for the plant to uptake those nutrients. So compost for us is like flour to a cake mix. So we use the compost as our base material, and we add more nutrients to it to fortify it so that when we amend the soil to grow the raspberries, that has all those proper nutrients like potassium and phosphorus and magnesium and nitrogen and calcium and all those things in the soil. So when the plant grows, that it's uptaking those nutrients so that it's a healthier plant and healthier fruit. So that's why when we're growing roses or tomatoes or certain kinds of trees like almonds and walnuts and pistachios, they all require different nutrients. So when farmers buy compost from us, we usually amend them with additives that are all organic so that they can till that in the ground so that the next crop is healthy. I have visited landfills in the past that I believe shouldn't exist because they were taking up natural canyons and beautiful wildlife ecosystems. They weren't in industrial areas. Mm -hmm. I haven't visited a facility that takes all this green waste and makes it into all these new soil products. What does your facility look like and what would I see if I did take a tour? That's a really good question. So our best facility for you to tour if you wanted to would be in Oxnard, California. And you can actually watch from the time a collection truck that came and picked up your barrel comes and unloads at our facility. You can see our personnel cleaning that material to make sure there's no plastic bags in there, cans, bottles, metal, things that doesn't belong in the organic material. And then you'll watch that material go through a very large grinding device that will 
uniform the size of all that material to about a two inch particle size so that we can compost it over the next 30 days. And you'll see wind rows of material, which are long rows of this material that heats up to about 130 to 150 degrees that we keep that material at for about 30 days. So it kills all the pathogens like Simonella, fecal chloroform, E. coli, any bad bacteria. It kills it during that period of time. It kills all the weed seeds. And then it cools down and it starts to build nutrients over the next 30 to 45 days after the first 30 days. And then once it cools down and cures, then we can screen it and refine it to different particle sizes. And then those different particle sizes allow us to use the compost as a mulch that you can put on top of the surface to save water, or you can screen it down to a really small size where you can till it in the ground and make potting soils out of it to grow plants in. You can actually see it being put in bags at that same facility and go out to the retail stores. I look forward to taking a tour. You are chair of the Board of Directors for California Lutheran University. And I was a trustee for the Los Angeles Community College District. And I know that our colleges, universities throughout the country have a lot of land, a lot of plants. I was trying to get them to totally recycle all the compost. Are they teaching that at the university? Are they encouraging the maintenance departments to do better at reprocessing their waste? Well, at least at California Lutheran, and with me being on that board and being part of Agriman, that we are definitely rehabilitating the soils at Cal Lutheran and encouraging the organic recycling. They've got a great program there that shows students how to grow foods that we supply all the soils to. We've just redone a whole greenfield area there where we rehabilitated the soil and we're about ready to do a project and rebuild a new uh, soccer field for a newly developing soccer team in Los Angeles, coming soon professional team. So we've done a lot of work at Cal Lutheran with their new science department to show the impacts of climate change and how rehabilitating the soil helps remove carbon out of the atmosphere by creating healthy soils and healthy plants. And as we all know that plants and trees pull carbon out of the atmosphere, so the healthier they are, the more carbon they pull out and put back in the soil. You are just one company doing this. You're director of the California Compost Coalition, which means that there are other companies throughout California that are trying to make sure that jurisdictions will be able to reduce their green waste from the landfill by recycling the organic waste products. How many competitors do you have, and do you consider them competitors, or do you consider them colleagues? They're kind of customers, competitors, and colleagues. I've been doing this for 30 years, and we uh, are early adopters to this process. So we are pretty far out there. As a company recycling over a million tons a year, probably our next closest competitor does half that much. So we are leading the way. We have a vision. We create value and compliance for all the jurisdictions we serve. We work with our competitors because diverting the next 20 million tons in California is a heavy lift for all of us in the organization and composters in California to get done. You were also director of the Gold Coast Veterans Foundation. Do you believe that this field is an ecological way to help solve our environmental problems that veterans and other people can be trained in to develop and work with in terms of changing their careers? Absolutely. As a 10-year Marine and veteran, I am always seeking veterans to join our company. They've got a lot of discipline and dedication, and they uh, are great leaders, and they inspire others to follow. The climate is changing. The the amount of carbon in the atmosphere is not healthy. It has lots of negative impacts on not just mankind, but animals and plants and all living organisms. It's a mission that we all should embark on and doing the right thing, and uh, veterans play a big role in that. Is your biggest problem 
companies and businesses and individuals as well as governmental agencies resistant to change when we know, as you just stated, that we have to make this change because there is climate change? Yeah, so it's always a lot easier just to throw everything away and have it go to a landfill, but that's irresponsible. So it is harder to segregate materials and put them in the right barrels and participate in these programs to benefit the environment. California, a long time ago, decided that it could do better for the environment and created the climate change bill in 2006, which is why we're now having to do all of these things like recycle green waste and food waste and wood waste. So I would say the biggest challenge is there is a lack of infrastructure in California to meet the mandates and the volumes, and we're trying to build new facilities as fast as we can as these materials get diverted from the landfill to compost centers to go back in the soil. You're involved with many other nonprofit organizations. What is the role that nonprofits have in this arena, or is it simply the governmental agencies and the businesses that have to do the work? We can do the work, but you have to inspire people to want to help. And by being a part of all these nonprofit organizations that have lots of leaders in them, I'm able to tell my story in a manner that echoes throughout the communities that we serve. Getting facilities permitted in California is probably one of the most excruciating processes that I go through in my daily job. And we were fortunate enough yesterday to get approved by the Board of Supervisors in Ventura County to permit a brand new compost center. And it took me 10 years. We certainly need to speed up this process if we're going to tackle these problems. It is one of the biggest Achilles heel is that everybody wants to do this, but getting through this cumbersome regulatory process doesn't care whether you're trying to build a apartment complex or a compost center. It just sees every project the same, and it's really complicated, so there's no pathway forward that speeds these programs up. So by being on these nonprofits, we get a lot of support for what we're doing so that when we get to the Board of Supervisors, our support network has already called every one of them and telling them why we need this facility so bad. So yesterday we received unanimous approval, 5-0 with no opposition, and it was worth all my time and those nonprofits to make sure we got that accomplished. You don't sound like a quitter, so thanks for making that effort and continuing to try and do the right thing. I want to thank you very much for your innovative work in this area and encouraging people to be responsible and recycle their organic waste. Thank you for being my guest. Well, thank you for having me. You have an incredible show, and I'm uh, honored to have uh, been able to participate with you today. Thank you. I have been speaking with Bill Camarillo, who is CEO and founder of Agromen. I'm Nancy Perlman. Thank you very much for joining us, and do tune in again next week. If you would like free information about these environmental issues, go to www.ecoprojects.org or call 310-559-9160. Environmental Directions with your host, Nancy Perlman, is a community affairs program of the nonprofit organization, Educational Communications, and this station.